Lower league football management is one of the most fun things you can do in game. Taking a team in the lowest divisions and dragging them right to the top can be so much fun. But of course, this is all very, very difficult to do. You're dealing with limited finances and you're trying to find a way to get your seventh division team into the Premier League. It's not easy, but today we're going to try and help you with that by giving you some lower league management tips to help you in your save. Some of these tips are going to be quick things that you can do to help your team. Other tips are going to be about ways and methods of playing with your lower league side but we're taking over here at Dartford and I'm going to try and use them as an example for you and the first thing is pretty unique to this year often we get comments saying aren't these tips the same as every other year in FM well yeah kind of because football manager doesn't really change and we have to update these videos every year anyway and sometimes there are additional tips and we have one here for you and of course that is in non-league as much as it might be nice to play Pep Guardiola football and whatnot it's just not the way to go. When you're playing in these lower league divisions, you won't have the players, or at least most of the time, without some kind of broken tactic, you won't have the players that have the ability to play really nice football. They won't have the attributes to follow your tactics perfectly. And you've got to deal with that. Now, I always say with non-league, try and keep your tactics simple and dumbed down. Whether it's wing play or route one or playing for set pieces, those styles of play are going to be much more beneficial to you than asking these style of players to play tiki tacker football. They likely haven't got it in them. So I always suggest to keep your tactics simple and one thing that I think is very beneficial in non-league so tip number one other than just keeping things simple is go to your in possession and then play for set pieces now you don't necessarily have to have this on you can put it on midway through a game let's say if you're struggling but the more set pieces you have with a non-league side the better your chance of scoring and obviously this year we have had the changes to the set piece system and it's so important that you focus on these and get these right choose your set piece set your set pieces up the best you can once you've got those set pieces set up you want your team to become masters of those set pieces to score them as often as possible now in non-league you don't necessarily have every day available for training the way that you would with a professional club here for example we're allowed to train on Tuesday Thursday we've got a bit of training on Friday and then we've got the match and then the week after it's the same right the maximum you get is four days here and whilst you could try and focus on getting certain players attributes up and making them better players in specific areas really with these non-league teams you're not going to keep players around for very long you'll be hoping to get promoted as quick as possible and that'll go all the way up until you're in the championship really you won't hang on to these players so there's not really much point in trying to develop all their attributes to the max instead you're better off in your training focusing in on specific things that are going to help you in game one of them for example is set pieces and set piece routines I would make sure your team is training this until they have maximum familiarity on these tactics that way they'll have the perfect chance of scoring from set pieces as regularly as possible and that can genuinely get you 10 15 20 goals a season season even in non-league just from abusing those set pieces bullying the opposition and trying to score as many goals that way as possible and that leads us nicely on to our next point tip number two when you're managing in non-league like I say you shouldn't really be playing any kind of too in-depth tactic that involves too many instructions and fancy styles of play because your players won't have the attributes to really play that at a top level I'm not saying it won't work it's just probably best to avoid that and the same thing applies with your players when you're looking for players for your lower league management I will always say physical attributes are king we mentioned this last year and so many of you agreed with us dribbling on a striker is great passing on a center back is great but how important is it really you know the argument is there what usually works in non-league though is if someone is super quick and can easily break the opposition's offside trap or if someone's really big and tall and strong and great at heading in the air they can score you lots of headers you can play to them same with center backs if you've got someone that's good in the air and can put in a hard tackle that's kind of all you need they don't necessarily need great passing ability and I would always suggest to prioritize players with good physical attributes over players with good technical attributes when you are in these lower divisions. And that leads us nicely on tip number three, the kind of players that you recruit in your saves with lower league management. Now we're going to use England as an example here. We are here in the Vanarama National League South. Above us is the fifth tier and then we still got the fourth tier, the third tier before we even get to the championship. And it's only about them when I actually start assigning players for money. And you might be thinking, well, what do you mean? How else are you going to sign players for your team? Team. Well, in these lower divisions, I would always suggest focusing in on getting players in through loans and free transfers. I would argue you shouldn't even ever spend a transfer fee on a player until you are in the second division, using England as an example. When we're in these lower divisions, we want to be picking people up as free agents that can get tempting when you're in League Two. You see that player that your scouts reckon has five star potential who costs 100,000. There's a good chance if you sign him in League Two and you keep getting promoted, by the time you're in the championship, he might not even be good enough to play in your first team anymore and you wasted what at the time was a big chunk of money 
money that could have gone towards your facilities and your general club. I would always say bring players in on free transfers. It's the much better way to do things. And on top of that, focus in on loans, particularly loans from big clubs, Premier League, Championship, League One level clubs. You can search for these specifically by unticking this transfer section, go into loan, so selecting anyone that's even doubtful of joining us on loan, or you can go ahead and select straight up loan listed players. Now loans can cost you a little bit of money, but I had it in a comment last year where someone said, let me see what it says here, August the 5th apparently. Apparently on August the 5th of every single year, when they're in the English divisions at least, lots of these young loan players you're able to get with playing no fee at all. Maybe because clubs are so desperate to offer them on loan that they're willing to offer them for free. I don't know. You can definitely get players for free loans, but whether this August the 5th date is exact, I don't know. But yes, usually the later in the window, you can actually get players to come to your club without paying any of their wages whatsoever. You want to abuse these loan markets, these free markets as often as you can until you start to get to a division like the championship where you can start buying players. Obviously in non-league, your aim is just to get promoted as quick as possible to get that money flowing in to your club. And if you use these loan players, chances are you can dominate the division. It's actually not that big of a step up either between the Vanarama National League South to the Vanarama National League into League Two, League One. Obviously there is a step up, but it's only really when you get to the championship in the English division example, when you start to really need a high quality of player, then maybe you're not playing Route One anymore and just focusing on physical attributes. This is going to apply to all of your lower league teams, focusing on those free transfers, focusing on those loans. And that leads us nicely on to tip number four, those free transfers. Yes, you could go ahead and scout Danny Simpson, scout John Luca Leve here, scout Joe Dudu, or you could just go ahead and do what every non-league manager will suggest to you. Don't waste your time doing that. It costs money to scout players. And sometimes the reports won't be in the best knowledge either. I'd always suggest just highlighting everyone that you want to bring in, right click, and then offer them a trial. You can do this on an individual basis as well. If you just wanted Danny Simpson, for example, what that will do is it will then trial that player at your club. I've got attribute masking off here for the sake of this video, but normally you would know nothing about Danny Simpson's attributes. If you give him a trial, he'll come to the club. He might reject it. He might accept. Most of the time, he'll accept the trial. He'll come to you. You can set it to four weeks is the best thing to do. He'll trial at your club for four weeks, no cost to you. And at the end of them four weeks, you'll know just how good he is and if he's worth picking up as a free transfer. And you can do this with a bunch of players. It doesn't necessarily just have to be one at a time. You used to be able to get a silly amount of players on trial at once. There might be some kind of cap on it. I haven't done lower league management for a couple of years now, but these tips will always still apply. So go ahead, find the players that you want, offer them in on trial. It's a much easier way to get knowledge on them than scouting them is. My final tip, and maybe the most beneficial one to you if you want to rise up the divisions quick, is try and get yourself a senior affiliate. You might already know about this. You might not. If you don't know what this is, it's very beneficial to a lower league club. It will allow you to get your senior affiliates, players that are available for loan to your club without any real cost to you. For example, if we have Manchester City as a senior affiliate, we could take some of their players on loan without having to pay a fee for them. But obviously Man City is a dream team. How can you actually get a senior affiliate? Well, you go to Club Vision, make board request, go to networking and then senior affiliate. You can request this. Sometimes they'll say yes, great idea. Sometimes it will say no. But as you can see, it would allow us to get players on loan without having to absorb the cost of their wages. I've literally just joined our club here on day one, so they aren't willing to do that here at Dartford. But if you've been up your club for a while and doing well, getting yourself a senior affiliate is going to be so beneficial to you. It will allow you to get so many great players on loan at your club with no additional cost. So try that as often as you can. Always ask for a senior affiliate until you can get one. Even if our senior affiliate was in League One, those players are going to be far better than the players that we're using here in the sixth tier, I think we are right now. So yes, always look for one of them. And there are some general tips for you to help improve your game in lower league management. Like I say, a lot of these will have applied for other football manager years as well. But if this was new to you, hopefully you have enjoyed it. Don't forget to smash the like button for us, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.